So much gear and equipment in the home brewing scene has seen dramatic upgrades in the last 12 years that I've been brewing. Hops, dry yeasts, even chilling equipment. For example, a chilling trajectory of a home brewing uh, person might be to start chilling in a water bath. You chill your five gallons, then you buy an immersion chiller, you use that, then you buy a plate chiller, then a counterflow chiller. However, in dispensing, it's pretty linear. So most people will start bottling and then they'll move into the almighty keg. Have you ever wondered why batches are five gallons or 19 liters? Even Pico Brew, an automated push button home brewing system, it does all of its stuff and then it dispenses from a Cornelius keg. So the, while a lot of things in home brewing have changed dramatically, the keg is the, the stable focal point and we'll talk about more why you should get into kegging and what you can do with a keg. If you've looked into kegging at all, there's probably nothing I'm going to tell you in this section that's going to surprise you. For example, you've got one container versus 50, and that's storing. How do you store one versus 50? One's quite easy, 50 becomes another matter. Cleaning, filling, again, one versus 50. But there are a couple of things that I might surprise you with uh, as far as the functionality of kegs go, and let me go ahead and show you these right now. After the endorphins of the initial purchase wear off, people kind of come to their senses and they see this big keg and say, what am I going to do with it? Well, if you're North American, chances are you have a massive refrigerator. And if you're a bachelor, chances are you have a pretty large refrigerator without food. And if you're a North American bachelor, then this is the perfect storm on which you can use your food fridge to deal with a couple different tasks involving the keg. First, I've included the non-committer in the refrigerating section about how to put in a keg in the food fridge, notch out a wood shelf, and kind of do two birds with one stone. You have your food and your fridge in here. That's already been done, but there's a couple things that you can do here that you might not necessarily think about. If you review the short-term option, bringing the keg to a barbecue or a park, you'll know that you want to bring your beer down to temperature, say uh, 4C or 40FC. That'll act as a th thermal battery so that you don't necessarily have to put it on ice immediately. So in order to do that, you can do that vertically, like in the non-committer, or with a set lid, you can do it horizontally. Also, you can condition beer in here, which just means you keep it cold, you keep it carbonated, and you let it mature uh, in the back of your fridge, and you can do that on the side. Like I mentioned, it has to have its lid set, and you can put it in there, and it won't, you won't have any problems with leaks. The third thing is actually not beer-related, in so much that we're dealing with finished beer, but it's kind of how to make beer in the summertime. So if you live in Texas and your tap water temperature is 90 Fahrenheit, you know that after your boil, you can't bring that wort down to anything past 90 Fahrenheit. You're kind of in a pinch, unless you want to buy ice. But uh, I'm not a big proponent of buying things unnecessarily for waste. So what you can do is if you have an empty keg, fill it with water a day or two days before, throw it in the back of your fridge. That'll bring it down to 40F. As you conclude your brew day, take your tap water, take your immersion chiller, bring your wort down to 90F or as far as you can go. Take your cold 40C water, put it in a cooler. Take your 90 degree F wort, put it in a fermenter, and then use that as your water bath. And actually, you don't even need to stir it. You can seal up your fermenter you can put it in there, and over the course of about an hour, they'll reach an equilibrium. So 90, 40, the middle is 65. 65F is a perfect temperature to ferment, so pitch your yeast. We'll see what that looks like inside the fridge with the food in front. It's not so offensive, I promise. With a little rearranging, as you can see, nobody's worse for wear. Looking at the fermenter PDF lecture, it's really no secret how I feel about kegs. Save for the occasional sour beer or barley wine that you want to age, I really see no reason to bottle. That said, I've never actually met another brewer that's went from bottling to kegging and said, you know what, I miss bottling, I want to go back. It's just not in our vocabulary. So if you take one piece of advice from me, do this. Buy as many kegs as you think you need, and then buy two more.